The traditional maize and beans type of farming is being replaced by more profitable and efficient ways that are aimed at improving profits. Strawberry farming has emerged as one of the most sought-after venture by Kenyan farmers. Suitable growing areas include Kiambu, Nyeri, Nairobi, Kerinyaga, Kitale, Kericho, Naivasha, Molo, Embu, Kenangop, Sagana, Kitengela and Athi River. Today we take you step by step on the things you need to have and practice to become a successful strawberry farmer. Strawberry farming in Kenya is done outdoors. However, for better performance, greenhouses are recommended because they protect the plants from excessive weather elements, pests and diseases. When selecting a site for strawberry farming in Kenya, choose an area with adequate well-distributed rainfall of about 1200 mm annually. Do not grow your strawberries where tomatoes, eggplant, potatoes, peppers, raspberries or blackberries have grown in the last three years. This plant acts as host for fungi and insect pests that build up in soil unless you place them on at least a three-year rotation schedule. When it comes to soil testing, it's always recommended that you carry out a soil test before planting any disease vulnerable crops. Strawberry farming does best in areas whose soil pH is 5.5 to 5.6 and they should be drained and weed free. The crop thrives in hot climate and does not tolerate frost or extremely low temperatures. It is prudent to select only varieties adapted to the climatic conditions of the part of the region where you live. We need to get the we need to get good seedlings and these seedlings you have to have the knowledge on how to raise the seedlings. In our greenhouse here as you can see we have uh, we have strawberries and we have just transplanted this month. For the Kenyan conditions Chandler, Douglas, Aiko, Pajaro and fan varieties perform well. The Pajaro is characterized to be fast growing with large berries and good flavor while Selva produces small berries with good flavor and color. <music> On to propagation. Strawberries are normally propagated from splits which are rooted and they should be selected from vigorous, high yielding and disease free plants. The seedling of the strawberries can be purchased at an average of 15 Kenyan shillings per seedling. The seedlings can be bought from the Kenya Agricultural and Livestock Research Organization or other authorized seedling dealers. To the field operation. You can grow from seeds or using transplants from already existing strawberry plants. It is recommended to plant strawberries at the end of the rainy season and it should be done on raised beds to promote good water drainage and development of larger berries. When preparing the planting holes, the farmer should ensure the holes are deep enough to accommodate the entire root system of the crop without bending it. Spacing is very important when planting. Plant seedlings at a spacing of 20 inches apart and 4 feet between rows are for the roots and they should be covered with the crown at the soil surface. After establishment, it is important to provide care to the established strawberries to maximize production. On to mulching. After planting the strawberry plants, mulching the beds with either plastic mulch or shredded leaves or straws helps to conserve moisture, minimize the rate of weed emergence, and also keeps the fruit cleaner by keeping the strawberries off the dirt. As the mulch breaks down, it also adds organic matter to the soil. Weeding is an important cultural practice because the weeds are known to compete with the plants for nutrients, moisture, space, sunlight, thus reducing quality of fruits. 
However, during critical growth periods such as flowering, fruiting and establishment, weeding should not be done in order to avoid any disturbances. Strawberries are sprawling plants and the seedlings send out runners. These runners should be trained in order to follow a specific pattern for better performance. When it comes to irrigation, water is very essential when growing strawberries. These plants need a lot of water, especially when the runners and flowers are developing. With greenhouse use, drip irrigation is highly recommended as it waters at the roots. To ensure there is enough water, sufficient water, always, because this is a plant that requires a lot of water. So you have to ensure the system is uh, supplied with enough water. And and also, as you supply water uh, for system like this for hydroponics, you have to ensure that you have, you can determine the drainage rate, which helps to determine amount of water to apply. For for example, in our case here, we we know the amount of water we are supposed to apply for. So for the farmers out there who will. Uh, will need to grow this, the strawberry on a hydroponic system, they have to ensure that uh, they put into account of this, this because they will ensure they use uh, the right amounts of water. Pruning is majorly aimed at increasing food production and the flowers should be pruned off immediately they appear. Fertilizers should be used to maintain soil fertility and maximize plant growth and fruit production. Strawberry is considered a heavy feeder, so regular boosting of foliar seeds improves vegetative, flower and fruit growth and provides calcium to form the skin of the fruit and to decrease fruit deformities. As you can see, we have removed all the runners and, and the flowers to ensure the, the, the plant grows well. So farmers out there, they should ensure that within the first one month, there are no flowers and runners for them to grow well. However, if too much fertilizer is applied, it promotes excessive leaf growth and poor production of flower stalks. In case where nitrogen is in excess, it results in soft and easily damaged strawberries. Even though strawberry farming is a lucrative venture, pest and disease attack is a common challenge faced by the strawberry farmers. The aphids are very troublesome pests for the strawberries as they feed on the sap of the plants, causing loss in vigor and transmit viral diseases. They are managed quite easily by spraying off recommended pesticides. Some of the pests which we are in strawberry production are white flies and you can use uh, sticky traps to trap the white flies or you spray. There are a range of chemicals in the market which you can use to control the pest. Uh, and also we have mealybugs, they are white in color. Uh, for farmers who are out there can just uh, uh, scout and look on the crown of the plant and you will recognize their white uh, um, organisms moving there. So these ones you have to control and you use chemicals which are available in the market. The other serious pests are the nematodes, which are severe in sandy soils than in clay with high organic matter content. Several types exist like the Laysons nematodes, which attack roots causing amber to dark brown spots. Severe infestations of the root knot nematodes cause stunting, wilting and death of the plants. To manage the nematodes, it is advised for the farmer to use nematode-free plants, practice crop rotation and soil fumigation to curb the pests. The other pests are the red spider mite, which feed on the young and tender leaves, especially on the underside. Mites can be a nuisance in dry weather, therefore, irrigation can be a control measure in spraying with appropriate pesticides. Uh, in integrated pest management, that is IPM, we are using several ways or methods to contain pests in, in case uh, in production of strawberries. And you can see from the beginning we have set up uh, a, a greenhouse and we can see screen it. This is to prevent pests from entering here. And that is the first, uh, that's the first way we have con controlled the, the pests. And also, before you handle, you realize we have two doors which should remain closed always. And that is another way to ensure we are containing pests. And also, 
we are using sticky traps, yellow sticky traps to trap the, the white flies, which is a challenge to control because they multiply fast. So you have to uh, use sticky traps uh, for, for controlling white flies. And also, we are using chemicals uh, to control this uh, pest. So we are using a number methods to control pests to ensure like the pest uh, density, the population goes low. Yeah, we are not just using one single method like chemicals. We are combining a number of ways to control pests. The reason why we advise farmers to use integrated pest management is because you realize once you use a lot of chemicals, one, you are spending a lot of money on chemicals. Two, the, those chemicals, they will be accumulated in the plants. And remember, this is the production of strawberries. So that means if you are spraying uh, weekly these strawberries, you may end up failing to harvest because there is that these other methods are safe. They are eco-friendly, like using our sticky traps. It's cheap and it is eco-friendly that you are not polluting the environment. Remember, when you use a lot of chemicals, they're just polluting the environment. And if that is not good, we are looking to a, 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 an environment which is good. And many a times when we use chemicals, you find that these pests are resistant. With time, they develop a resistance. So it's advisable to combine all these methods to contain them because with only with only chemicals you will not be able to contain the population of this space. So On to the diseases. Powdery mildew is an example of a disease that attacks the foliage which shows the upward curling of the leaf edges and cobweb-like mold on the lower surface. In severe cases, the fruits may also be affected. In this case, maturity will be affected with. Botrytis is very critical in strawberry farming as it starts as a blossom infection and spreads into the fruits both in the orchard and in the store. The fruit is normally covered with a light grey mold made up of fungal spores and mycelia and application of sulfur or copper dust are effective. There are other diseases but the major disease in strawberry production which we have seen in this uh, project is uh, root rot which is a major challenge. So for you to contain this disease, you have to ensure that your system, uh, for, for the case of uh, hydroponics, it is well drained. So the drainage is well. You have to ensure there is good drainage so that you may prevent root rot. And also, if in case you get uh, plants which are affected by root rot, you have uh, to remove them from the, from the system, from the planters. On to harvesting. The strawberry crop takes about 70 days to maturity and usually the fruits are ready for harvesting four to six weeks after blossoming and only fully ripened red berries should be picked because they do not ripen after harvesting. The picking process should start when the top of the strawberry is completely red and the harvesting of fruits should begin in the morning hours to ensure the berries have a longer shelf life. Harvesting can be done up to three weeks and this should produce a lot of berries depending on the variety and the management practices employed. For instance, under good management, an eighth piece of land can produce 30 to 50 kilograms of strawberries per week. The, the plants before you harvest, you have to give them some time after spraying. So if you are spraying only chemicals, you will find that like uh, you will have a challenge because you are always using uh, pesticides which are expensive. So one thing I have said is that it cuts costs when you use integrated pest management. It is possible to minimize the onset of disease and insect problems through rotation of strawberry patch from one side to another. Strawberries have a short fresh period and therefore the cold chain is very critical during the post harvest period of the berries and the picked berries should be kept out of sun, wind and dust. The useful post harvest life of strawberry depends on the cultivar, degree of ripeness, handling and care, temperature when picked and kept. Refrigeration of strawberries can be done for several days and washing should only be done just before using the fruits. 
Pre-washing is avoided as it results to softening and promotes decaying of the berries. The market prices of strawberry ranges from 50 shillings to 120 shillings, while 1 kg pack is 200 to 480 shillings. Strawberries can be sold in supermarkets, hotels, hospitals, green groceries and milk and fruit processes. The fruits are eaten fresh or canned, processed into jams and juices, milkshake, yogurt and cake decoration. Commercially, the strawberries are used as flavors and in the cosmetic industry. Strawberry farming may be the way to go for those in search of the best deals in farming.